Okay, they're messy numbers, but they're just numbers. So from here, I can say the axis uh, R is equal to minus B on 2A, right? It's R because this is a quadratic in R. It's not a quadratic in X or anything like that, okay? Uh, minus B, 72 pi. This is a double negative. All divided by two lots of this guy, 4 pi plus pi squared. Uh, cancel, 36. What else can I cancel? I can cancel some pies, right? That sounds sad, but in this case it'll make things neater. Cancel that one, which means this one's gone and this one's gone. Is that okay? So this leaves us with, what's on the top? 36. What's left on the bottom? So, okay, what does this mean? Is this, is this the answer? This is the radius of this circle. That's good, but have a look at the question. Reread the question. What are we actually asked to find? Perimeter of the square. So here is the perimeter of the square. I worked it out earlier. I just need to evaluate it for this specific value of R. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, I'll go over here. Perimeter equals, there it is, 72 minus 2 times pi times this guy. What have I got? 4 plus pi, right? Like that? Is that okay? What do I do with this? <laughs> this is not so bad. It's lots of numbers, but we can deal with it, can't we? Um, 4 plus pi is the denominator, isn't it? 4 plus pi is the denominator. So why don't I get this guy on the same denominator, which is 4 plus pi? I think that's going to be 28. That'll be 8 plus 72 pi. That's on 4 plus pi, isn't it? Minus, what's that? That's convenient, isn't it? Certainly smacks of a well-designed question. OK, let's have a look at that. Does that all check out? Yeah, you saw where this came from, right? It came from the 72. Cancel, cancel, and there is the required perimeter. Okay? Now, what's challenging about this question? I'll admit there's a part of this question that I, I don't like, that's hard, which is just pies. Just pies, you know? Um, because it's irrational, transcendental, it, it, it resists simplification. So all the way through, you just have arithmetically complicated stuff, okay? But the real meat of the question is actually all over here. This is the real question. This is what's going on that requires real mathematical skill. That's just calculation. This is where you really need to think about what the question means and how to approach it. OK? As I said before, before I come to your question, Russell, um, I will leave it as an exercise to you to define this. Let's let that be s. All of your equations will be different now, every single one. Right? Because the area of this thing will be s squared. The perimeter of this will be? The perimeter will be 4s, which makes the circumference of this 72 minus that. Yeah? And then off you go, you'd get different equations. Okay? See if you get the same answer. Russell, you had a question? Before I come to Eric's? So I'm trying to find a maximum or a minimum, right? In this case, it's a minimum. Um, you can see when you have a look at this guy here, right? What kind of, like, is this concave up or concave down? It's concave up, right? So the minimum is going to occur at the axis of symmetry. So I went straight to the axis of symmetry. Does that make sense? You have three techniques for finding a maximum or a minimum. You factorize, that gives you the roots and you come halfway. Or you can complete the square to find the vertex, right? Or you can go straight to the axis of symmetry, uh, which will tell you the x-coordinate or r-coordinate in this case. 